Well, this video probably isn't going to turn out the way that I wanted it to. So, hey, I'm going to be transplanting some papaya today. And not just any papaya, but I had gotten some papayas from the grocery store. Went ahead and scooped out some of the seeds, threw them into a pot, and then nothing happened for like two, three weeks, maybe even a month ago now that I did this, and none of the seeds came up. And so I thought, well, I probably did it wrong, of course. Went to Lowe's and I just happened to see that there was a papaya sitting there and it was a red lady papaya. And I looked it up real quick on the internet and said, hey, it's self-fertile. So here we go. We got this nice, pretty papaya sitting here and leaves are curling just a little bit. Still trying to figure that one out, but all the rest of the leaves are good. And I put it into the same pot that I had put all my seeds in from that papaya. And wouldn't you know it? Yeah, now they decide to come up. So I've got a few of these uh, little nursery pot size things here. Uh, got a few different ones, different styles. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how I'm going to scoop these out and put them in a pot with some other potting soil to transplant them. And most of these, as you can see, usually they're only like the first two uh, fake leaves. I, I forget what the name of these are called. Uh, something like cyclodons or something, uh, cyclodon leaves. Uh, but the first true leaves haven't quite formed on many of these. A couple of these true leaves are really tiny. This is where I'm going to go ahead and transplant a bunch of these. I'll probably put two or three uh, into each of these pots. Here's the process that I'm going to do for that. Now, of course, the first most important thing is you got to put some dirt in there. So I had gotten some jungle growth, which is what I would normally do or use to uh, transplant my stuff. And that's now in this 1.5 cubic liter or cubic foot bag instead of the two cubic foot. And then it was like a couple bucks less. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is some shrinkflation going on right here. 25% uh, less for, well, about the same price. So I went ahead and got some of this. This is some, uh, what brand is this even? Uh, this is some of that uh, Stay Green. Uh, it's supposed to be garden soil, flowers, and vegetables. This stuff right here, I don't know how they can even get away with calling this soil. This is some shredded wood chips and some other material. There is some perlite and maybe some sort of uh, a fertilizer in here, but it is it's just pretty much this is mulch this isn't really soil this is mulch so i'm going to put a bunch of this stuff on the bottom of the pots just to kind of fill it up and this stuff will drain really well but then switch it over to this jungle growth on top where this this is dirt the this is some better soil there is some like little tiny wood chip pieces in here as you can see there's like a piece right there some little shreds but this is much more broken down and there's like another little piece. But yeah, this is some much better broken down stuff. This is what I use for pretty much everything. And it looks like that's what I'm going to continue to use because that stay green stuff is not a good replacement for it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill up this first pot with eh, about 50%, we'll call it uh, wood chip mulch soil-ish. I don't know even what you want to call this stuff. This is just mulch. But I'll fill this up about halfway. That should be good. Pack that down just a wee bit. And then put this much better stuff up on top. Tap it down just a little bit. Now, let's go get some seedlings to put inside of here. So these first seedlings that I'm gonna grab out of here, I'm gonna grab the ones that are right here at the edge. I'm using a spoon just because I don't wanna use a big shovel because I wanna be able to very delicately get up underneath these plants and the roots and be able to lift them up so that we don't damage any of the roots underneath. Because these are very, very young seedlings and a little bit of a yank and these tiny little roots that are on here will just snap. So let's go ahead and dig out a few of these. There's one, two, three. Let's see if we can get three of them that are about the same size. Cause that one's a little bit longer than those two. That one's a little bit shorter than those two. That one's even shorter. Okay, well, how many of these things am I have to dig out before I can get a couple that are about the same size? Oops. That was a bit more jarring than I wanted it to be. There we go. That's about the right size. So there's one, two, three, all about the same size. That one on the left is a little bit short. Now here in my pot, I'm going to go ahead and get a little scoop out of the center and I'm going to try and put these down because this right here 
was about where the soil level was. So I'm going to dig this down and try and get this as close to the same soil level as it was. About like that. And the reason I'm putting three in is because if one of these things should fail, I want to make sure that I've got a couple backups. And honestly, with as many seeds as in here, and every time that I stir this thing around a little bit, it's probably going to kick up some more seeds. And I, there were easily, oh, I don't know, four, maybe 500 seeds in this papaya. I mean, these seeds, the, the seeds that are in the papayas are just, there's just a crazy number of seeds in each one of those papayas. And hopefully on one of the future videos, when I do some more of these, I'll be able to show you guys how I clean those, which was fairly simple. It's just the same method that everybody else is using online to... Uh, clean those papaya seeds when you first look at them they're going to look very delicate and like very dainty like almost caviar like oh i don't want to damage these things the seed that's inside of them though is like a dried peppercorn don't worry about breaking them or or scraping them up too much uh, if you have one of those fine wire mesh uh, colanders or strainers you can run this thing under your sink and just scratch the crap out of them just rattle them around inside of there and just get all that gooey stuff off and you'll see in the bottom of there it's like peppercorns you know like those little uh, pepper grinders just like that so now that i've got this first guy done let's go ahead and set him over in the sun let's see where's a good spot to put this guy we don't want to put him in the direct sun but let's go ahead and put this guy over here and then that way we can oh there's some more pots those are bigger Eh, let me just go ahead and keep on doing these. I'm going to grab these right here, go ahead and grab a couple more using that same little method, and probably go ahead and just pop up a couple more of these guys. There you go. There's another three that can go in one. I'm going to go ahead and fill up a bunch, and I'll be right back with you. Well, this is certainly a lot more papaya than I thought I was going to be growing uh, ever, really. I did not plan on <laughs> growing this many papaya. I don't know what I was thinking. So out of the main plant, I only managed to take about this many of the, the little seedlings out. Uh, there's still quite a few left that I have got to find more pots for. I threw five of the seedlings in here. Uh, I did 10 of these. There's only eight left because my neighbor came over, popped his head over real quick, and I was like, hey, you want some papaya? And he's like, sure. So he's going to grow some uh, over there at his place. And uh, so I'm going to take some of these and I'm going to, once they get up, you know, about this big or maybe just a little bit lower, I'm going to go ahead and plant them out uh, right here in the center of the yard or kind of, you know, around the low quad or just uh, over here just a little bit more. Maybe plant a couple more of them up over here in this area. Because one of the things that I'm wondering is how well is papaya going to do in zone 8B, 9A, like right on that line? We do get some freezing temperatures. We get a few frosts uh, each winter. I am genuinely curious to see just how well these will do here uh, over the winter so i'm gonna go ahead and keep some of the pots inside over the winter i'm gonna keep some of the plants outside over the winter and just see how they do Ooh, and looky there we, we've got ourselves a green tree frog just hanging out the little green tree frog wants you to subscribe if you like this kind of content and now that we have all of our uh, pots all filled up the most important part give them a shower and i'll probably give these things a shower once or twice a day just to make sure that everything is good scrubby dubby dubby there we go it's been about four weeks no it has been exactly four weeks do a quick update on the papayas oh and it is surprising just how differently all these grew so first of all uh, here is the big one which again i've got all these seedlings popping up nice and springy kind of like these guys uh i may end up after this is all done uh putting a bunch more of these in more pots and making more of them to because the more's better right so this papaya has grown up quite a bit we got a bunch of little seedlings and in the little pots i got them over here let's grab a couple of these for size comparison and for comparison they are probably about double to triple the size of the ones that are in the parent plant and the ones that are in their very own planter four out of the five have survived so far and these things are way bigger than their little tiny counterparts here that stayed in this uh, tight confined area it seems like the closer they are to each other the shorter they are and the less they're developed because these have here there's two there and two there and the ones in these pots were growing up a little bit bigger and taller than these guys and these guys are way nicer and bigger so i'm going to plant two of them real close right in here a little closer to the house plant two of the big ones up over there grab about 
half of the ones in these smaller pots and plant half of them over there and half over here. The big parent though, I think I'm just gonna leave this one in the main pot and just dig up a bunch more of these to kind of refill some of the other pots. Just so we have copious papaya. Again, I'm not sure why I'm trying to grow so many papaya, especially since I don't even know if they're going to survive here, but uh, it'll be fun, I guess. So what I'm gonna do here is over here on the far side or away from the house, I've got a uh, big one and a little one that I'm going to plant out of here. And then these two pots here have two plants each, and these two pots have three each. And I've got enough to where I can have the same amount here as back over there, up closer to the house, just see what the difference is in the landscape. If one lives, one dies. If there's a little microclimate in here somewhere, just to help me kind of feel everything out, or maybe they all live, which would be terribly great. I don't know what I'm going to do with that many papayas. When it comes to dirt, uh, I use this jungle dirt. You can use frog dirt, cow dirt, whatever kind of dirt you like. Just make sure that it's a good dirt, not some uh, one of those mixed bags that's just full of wood chips and garbage, basically. Make sure it's a good, high-quality dirt with lots of composting materials and other things that are gonna feed your plants. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plant these around here, and then I'll show you those when I get done. Because planting them, yeah, honestly, it's dig a hole, pile it in. You've seen this before. One thing I do wanna note really quick is just how extensive this root system already is. Even though it's just been four weeks, uh, there's a lot of roots going around here. Hopefully you can see that. Lots of good little roots. <sighs> Note to self, transplanting over 90 degrees, not recommended. Let's get these guys watered in and then I'll show you what it looks like. But in all seriousness, these guys are not looking too good even just after a couple minutes of being transplanted. So. You may want to uh, wait until the evening time, then go ahead and transplant them. Okay, now that we got these water cooled off just a little bit, go ahead and give these guys some water. And then I think I'm gonna hold off until the evening time, wait for the sun to get a little bit lower in the sky, shadows to get a little bit longer, and then we'll go ahead and pop a few more of these in the ground. Cause I, I want these things to survive. Uh, the point isn't to see how quickly they can die in the heat. That's not the point. It'd be an interesting experiment, but yeah, we're not trying to do that today. Now, honestly, I believe the biggest takeaway from this is, if you look here at this one, this is one that was taken, it's, it's a twofer, taken straight out the pot, plopped it straight in. I didn't disturb the roots or anything just because papayas don't like the roots to be disturbed. That's what the internet tells me anyway. And this guy here, this single right here, kind of looking a bit floppy and not so, not so happy. And his partner over here, these were the the big and the medium sized ones that were in this pot right here, which means that I disturbed their roots quite a bit when I was trying to extract them. These will be as gentle as I can with, because uh, these still seem to be doing okay. Still keeping their leaves up. And that guy over there, he looks like he's doing pretty good. This one over here looks pretty good. So what I basically did is made like a little arrow shape, nice little triangle of papayas, and then the guava up over here and a fig right up over here. Just kind of fill the whole thing in as much as we can. So there's the far side away from the house. I am going to wait to do up here until the shadows get a bit longer in the day. Ooh, man, that it was a scorcher of a day. Finally got down to about 86 or so degrees, 88 degrees. So I had marked out one, two, three, four, five. Ooh, six, there it is. Uh, marked out my areas for where I'm gonna go ahead and plant these. Uh, I'm gonna dig these in same as everything else and I'll be right back with you so you can kind of see where everything went. Now let's see if we can water all these guys without stepping on any and without running the hose over any of the plantings here. So there's one, here's two, and these look so much better transplanting them out when it's a little bit cool out and we got some shade going. There we go. There's three, here's four, number five, and a little number six. Okay, so I'm gonna wander around this place, give everything a good drink of water. Looks like we still have some guavas to plant out over here and a few more things to do this weekend. But it is finally shaping up and kind of filling in a bit. Hopefully these, oh, what are we up to now? 12? Yeah, six and six, 12 papayas 
grow up real healthy and strong make sure you hit that like and subscribe of course that way you can see how much everything grows and picks up and follow along so you can see oh hey look we got a pretty ladybug let's go ahead and leave you right here with that pretty ladybug on some aphids chomping down thank you buddies